<laughs> Bitches. You had a piece of So to conclude our coverage on this year's Geneva Motor Show, here's a look at some of the other cars which we thought were interesting. All in all, it was a fantastic event and we can't wait to see what next year's show will bring. So enjoy. Brabus never ceases to impress. They can truly take any Mercedes creation and take it to the next level. A perfect combination of aggressiveness, elegance, and amazing workmanship puts this tuner in a league of its own. Whilst the Brabus Maybach Rocket 900 is the embodiment of limousines, of course with your bodyguards and an 850 horsepower Brabus GLS right behind you, god I love that car, it's so mean. I actually think that the Brabus 550 Adventure 4x4 squared was the coolest car there. I was never really a fan of the stock G500 4x4 squared, just because it's a bit of a cross-eyed, ooh look at me I'm an attention whore with a very modest penis car. But Brabus have really knocked it out of the park with the adventure. The addition of those really cool off-road parts, as well as painting the fenders in body color really give the car a menacing, uber cool and very befitting look. Well done Brabus. opinion Rimac was truly one of the stars of the show. The company is impressive on so many levels, first of which is their Concept 1. The car puts out 1224 horsepower and 1600 newton meters of torque, whilst looking so good inside and out. I can't wait for the Concept S. It really is the supercar of the future. But perhaps the coolest thing about Rimac is their mind-boggling development of technology and the fact that they are willing to share it with other manufacturers. The Koenigsegg Regera, for example, uses a Rimac developed battery pack, which plays a huge role in that car's incredible performance. If you look over here, here's the battery pack that was actually developed for the Koenigsegg Regera. Uh, so as you can see, they are also really helping out other manufacturers and really putting them on the map. Obviously, they're also working together with Aston Martin, but uh, more information on that later. A tuner, or should I say, a manufacturer that always has me drooling is Roof. Their new iteration of the Yellowbird was truly sensational. So although I'm not a huge fan of those more modern rear lights, the car looks absolutely gorgeous. I would definitely want mine in Brewster Green. But more important than those looks is the full carbon fiber bodywork and the carbon monocoque, as well as the 710 horsepower it has on tap. Now all of that is mated to a six-speed manual transmission, which really makes this car an absolute hero in my books. Oh, and by the way, it has a full pushrod suspension setup. How cool is that? So even as a huge Audi fan, probably the biggest disappointment of the entire show for me was Audi. That's mainly due to the new RS5. The RS5 was always the Aston Martin of the Audi product range. So even if it was a little bit disappointing dynamically, it just looked fantastic. Now whilst I'm happy to see that the new RS5 will have the grunt it always deserved from its turbocharged V6, I cannot get over the looks. Even in that gorgeous dark blue with black optics package, the car just looks boring, tame, and just a bit cheap. The rear diffuser looks like it came from a Chinese body kit factory, and the front lights make the car look like compact pussycat. You know that car driven by Penelope Pitstop in the cartoon Wacky Races? Oh, and those rotor wheels? They're just over and out, man. Still, I'm happy to see that the overdue Audi RS4 event will get that turbo V6. Now all that needs is a manual transmission. Alright, so the 
new Ford GT. Here it is in like a matte black, kind of grayish color. Not really much to say here. I don't really care whether it's, as, it's faster than a competition or not. The thing just looks amazing. Nothing to be discussed in my opinion. Okay, so the new Ford GT is one of the sexiest things after the chicks at the Maserati and Abt Sportsline booths this year, but this car trumps all of that. An original Ford GT40 in this amazing black and gold color scheme. It's hard to put into words how badly I want this car, but I want this car more than I want to spend the night with Gigi Hadid, and that means quite a lot. Another tuner that is definitely going into the right direction is TechArt. Their new Grand GT based on the new Panamera looks fabulous. A perfect combination of aggressiveness and elegance, which make it look so much better than its predecessor. The GT Street R based on the 991 Turbo S and the KN Magnum are absolute beasts and look really cool in the metal. We are going to visit TechArt in Germany and show you everything in much more detail, so look out for that video coming soon. Alright guys, so welcome to the interior of the new Range Rover Velar. Uh, has to be mentioned, the car is gorgeous from the outside as well as from the inside. As you can see, there's practically no more buttons. Everything is just touch screens. Um, what a big step. Looks really, really nice. So admittedly, Mansori is not for everyone. However, it must be said that the company has successfully recognized that these insect transformer looking body kits are a thing of the past and are actually designing some truly aesthetic things since a couple of years. Say what you will, but the Mansori Bentega makes a stock one look boring and really ugly. I have to point out that surprisingly enough, their carbon fiber work is of high quality which is usually not the case with many of the tuners upon closer and more exact inspection. 